to finally a new episode of Mumble with the Guru. I know that y'all been waiting for so long and I'm so sorry about that, but today we've got a cool one to show you. I've got the Nokia N97. In fact, that's what I'm recording this show on right now. So you can get a good idea of the video quality of the N97. It's actually pretty good, I think. Um, unfortunately, it's still just a regular uh, VGA quality, um, you know, 30 frames per second. No HD, no nothing, it's still the same 5 megapixel lens that we've had on N-Series for years, including the Nokia N90, or N79, which is currently my favorite non-touch screen uh, S60 phone. So, the N97, obviously, I don't know how the sound is turning out yet. I'm doing this with no microphone, so that you can get a really, really good idea of the actual quality of the video. Um, this is probably about a meter distance from me, so you can get an idea of where it's focusing and that sort of thing. Um, but that's the N97 thus far video recording quality. I've also used it a few times with Quick, uh, which was preloaded, which is very cool. And uh, that seems to be a really good op option as well. So tons of cool stuff with that. Um, there is an on-screen button that you can use to start and stop the recording. Or you can still use the hardware button, which is a really nice touch. I like having the option of that. So now I'm going to switch to recording the show with the Nokia N79 that I can show you some cool stuff with the N97. So hang on for just one second. Okay, I'm back. So that was the Nokia N97. Now I'm recording the show with the N79 so that I can actually show you the Nokia N97. So this is obviously the white variant, um, a Euro. So I'm getting really crappy 3G. This is in Dallas. And I'm pretty sure that AT&T has switched over to using a lot of 850 for 3G. Um, which is resulting in the poor 3G uh, signal that I'm getting. Because nobody else has reported any reception issues with the N97. In fact, uh, my coworkers at Mobile Burn said that theirs is simply phenomenal. So I'm pretty, pretty much uh, convinced that it's AT&T's fault. And my edge reception is actually pretty good, which kind of collaborates for that. So um, this is the N97. It's, uh, the slide is actually really nice. The, whoa, that would have sucked. The hardware on the N97 is the very first N-Series that I can confidently say this was probably built by somebody from the E-Series team. Um, so if you've been following Nokia's N-Series and E-Series, you know that the E-Series are typically built like tanks. Um, just phenomenal build quality and materials used and all that kind of stuff. Whereas the N-Series, not quite so much. and It doesn't usually have the same quality feel. The N97 is the first N-Series phone that I feel really confident about the build quality of. So I'm very, very, very impressed with that. The display is obviously very large. It's a three and a half inch um, in HD, which I believe is 640 by 360 pixels resolution. Um, and it is a resistive touch screen. However, I personally don't see a big issue with that. Um, it's incredibly responsive, much more responsive than the 5800 Express Music, which also has a smaller display, but the same resolution and also resistive touch. So as you can hear, and see the uh, slide function has a very, very nice click to it. It's very solid and um, it's just incredibly, incredibly well done. It's very obvious that they put a lot of work um, and time into that, so that's really impressive. Uh, just a quick overview of the device. This is a proximity sensor here. This senses when your phone is held up to your face like this and it turns off the display so that you don't get accidental button presses and that sort of thing. Very nice touch. We also have a front-facing VGA resolution uh, camera for video calls in Europe and those kind of places. In the U.S., it's really only useful for sending multimedia videos to your friends and stuff. There's also an ambient light sensor which controls the backlight and the keyboard backlight. The display, obviously. These are two touch-sensitive end, end and send keys, um, obviously for hanging up and all that kind of thing. This is actually looks like the old N-Series multimedia menu, but it's actually the regular menu button. You can press it once to get to the menu. You can also press and hold it for a few seconds to get the task manager, which I have had a handy task man installed, so that's what you're going to get from me. So it's got 32 gigabytes of internal storage plus a micro SD card. So you could technically have uh, 48 gigs of storage on this device if you had a 16 gig micro SD card. There's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up top, and that does work with TV out, however, Nokia has apparently stopped including the TV out cable in the phone packaging, so that's kind of frustrating. Power button, the camera slider back here with the dual LED flash. This is the volume rocker, dedicated camera key, and over here on the side we have the slide lock that lets you lock the keys, or the screen rather. 
and then the uh, micro USB charging. One cool thing I want to point out, there's a little bitty light right next to here that shows white. When you charge the phone, that light comes on. When the battery is fully charged, that light turns off so that you know just by glancing at the phone whether or not it's done charging or not. One thing I would like to see Nokia do in the future is have this be a three color light that shows red, green, and yellow so that you have a little bit better idea of how much charge is currently on the battery if you were to disconnect it that moment. That would be extremely handy, um, but other than that, one thing though that I really want to point out, and Ben Smith at the Really Mobile Project pointed this out in a video that they posted today about the N97, and he claims that one of the silly things about this phone is that it comes with this in the box. This is the stylus. It has a little cap. You can pull the cap off and use that to touch the screen, and then the cap is connected with a little dangly lanyard thing so that you can dangle it from your phone. Now Ben says this is just absurd for a phone uh, to come with a stylus. And I would say the same thing that James said to Ben is I had to get this thing out of the box for the phone. I've been using the phone for over a week now. Actually a week now. And um, I have yet to even remotely wish that I had pulled the stylus out of the box. Um, the same is true on the 5800. The only thing that I've ever used the stylus for on that phone is to remove the SIM card. So saying that just because they included the stylus in the box means that it needs the stylus is completely false. Um, there's a lot of things wrong with S65 edition, which is, you know, you can easily admit that. However, one thing is that it's incredibly finger friendly. Um, there's really nothing on the phone that I need anything more than my finger for. So obviously a stylus is going to give you a little bit more accuracy, but to actually use the phone, every feature on the phone, you do not need a stylus, period. Unless you just have like carrot fingers that are so huge like a hot dog or something. But I don't think anybody has those. So definitely finger friendly. Um, we'll have a bigger review on this coming up soon. Rita's got one and I've got one too, so we'll have plenty of coverage very, very soon on the Nokia N97. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you next week.